yeah, the Legends novels these people seem to love so much have politics in them, and it's and it's deep in them. It's like, did you guys? Did people like ignore the fucking like the fucked up shit the Republic did in the fucking Clone Wars? Did they not fucking read these novels and actually actually read something besides? Oh, this is a cool story. Uh, that takes place in this era rather than just look what, what, what this story has to say. It's like, that's the thing about these people that, and I'm convinced by majority of these people don't actually understand star Wars because even the EU, because every time they read a, a, a book, they just put it down and read the next one. They don't actually consider what they just read. And that was the problem with me before when I did those old reviews that I did, I didn't actually truly think about, wow, what did, what did I just read and actually just write notes down. I didn't talk about the stuff that was interesting about the books. I talked, I thought about it long afterwards. It's like the you have there's some interesting stuff we can talk about in the EU. Like Shatterpoint, like basically the with the conversations that Mace Windu and Depa Balava are having on how the Jedi are not going to win this war with with staying as Jedi. That was such a great in deep conversation because it adds so much to revenge of the Sith. When you watch the movie, like everything like that novel did not to mention just basically showcasing just how brutal the clone wars was like the comics, the novels, like the old era of star Wars in 1999 and to the early part of 2008 was some of the best star Wars stories ever because it didn't just wrote a new story in the universe and that was it or just fucking shitted it out it actually published stories that question the soul of star wars itself what is this concept is this right is this wrong the stories were more complex they weren't cut and dry that is why i love the new jedi order series that's even though i have a lot to criticize legacy of the force with i like that story as well because of how it basically did did not basically did good versus evil. The stories were more complex, and that's what made them so much more interesting to read than some boring crap that we currently get now, where it's just oh this person good, this person bad. Like it, it doesn't just give us just one side of the story; it gives us all sides, and it like made it made it up to us to to, to interpret for ourselves. Yeah, there was a clear message in, in these stories, but you had to figure it out on your own. And the Republic Commando novels, people could say what they want about Karen Travis. I have some criticisms towards her, at least for Legacy of the Force, for basically wasting time on a storyline that could have basically been cut completely from the series with minimal changes. But Karen Travis in, in the Republic Commando novels, oh my god. She showed a side to the Republic that was not really shown in, in, in Star Wars novels. She wrote about just how fascistic the government was, how fucked up the Jedi were, and how they treated the clones, how they treated them as a slave army, and how the Confederacy and the Republic were basically this not much different from each other. And in, in its final novel, which I have I have I have yet to record the review, but I have I already have all the notes for it. So I won't say too much about it, but essentially in one of the passages, it basically talks about how the Imperial Corps will not, well, not the Imperial Corps, but the inner world won't see much of a difference, which is true because if we're looking at our world, which is why I feel like when these stories are written basically in the real world, using stuff that's happening in the real world, it adds so much more meat to these stories it isn't just a simple good evil story it's there's much more to it than that that's what makes it so interesting i mean it i just find what they do what, what, what they do 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 after it boring and, and and be honest this is why i think the old republic era for the most part after 2008 to be fucking boring because after the Darth Bane trilogy, it it just becomes the same shit that the fucking that everything else is in Star Wars. There was nothing creative. Like the old Republic era prior to it, 
gave us so much more. It showed like the hubris of the Jedi and how they actually, there's some things that, that, that there's signs of, of characters going to the dark side. They didn't do anything and they didn't take responsibility. I'd see old, old Republic two is like a masterpiece despite never being completed. It's like, this is the kind of stuff I enjoy talking about with star Wars, but these conversations I can't have anymore. And because my fashion for the star Wars franchise has basically been, a, basically been eroded by these, these same people. They don't appreciate the beauty of the star Wars expanded universe or the films for that matter, because they look for the superficial shit. That's not the kind of Star Wars fan I am. The kind of Star Wars fan I am, I look at other aspects of Star Wars. I look at, like, how do these systems work? What makes them work? How does it affect the, the world around them? That's why I consider Knights of the Old Republic 2 arguably the greatest Star Wars story of all time when, if, if we're not counting the books. Because everything that you do in that game affects the world around it. Like there's positive and the positive and negative consequences of your actions. And the, the question of what the force was, is, was questioned and multiple stories in this period, Traitor, Knights of the Old Republic 2, even the first game asked these questions. It wasn't so simple, and that's what made it so much fun. And these kind of conversations cannot be have had have anywhere because fans would rather talk about the superficial shit. Like, oh, the dark side. What is that an allegory for? Um, drug addiction. I mean, if anything else, I mean, there's so much things you can look at regarding the dark side. Yeah, the movies themselves does give some interesting things about the dark side but it's the eu that really gave us the most interesting look on the force that we haven't seen since from 1999 to 2005 the force was explored in ways that hasn't been explored before at that time and it hasn't been since like They've walked back, unfortunately, in Legacy of the Force of the interesting concepts that were introduced in Knights of the Old Republic 2 and and the novel Traitor and how Jason Solo and, and Verger, how they saw the Force. And I thought it was interesting, that conversation Verger and Jason had when they were near the Jedi Temple, the ruins of it in the novel Traitor, when she said, there's a secret that the Jedi will never tell you. There is no light side or dark side that is what was great about that fucking story because it was so interesting because it made it made you question is is there really a light or dark side of the force or is it simply people getting corrupted by power and it's such a shame that lucasfilm just fucking was scared not to even follow through with that because it has brought up even more questions and i wouldn't be shocked if if Chris Avalon read that novel and actually found that to be fascinating, and that's one of the novels that the philosophy of Rare Jair, I wouldn't be surprised, influenced the character of Kreia. I mean, it was so fucking great. And this is what I love talking about. It's so sad. Star Trek aligns with me more politically than Star Wars does, but Star Trek... There's some stuff I could talk about too that is fascinating. But these neckbeards don't want to talk about this. Yeah, I know so far I've been talking about entertainment. But considering that people here enjoy when I talk about this, and I, might, I appreciate it when you guys listen, or at least add to the conversation. I'm, so I'm just going to look. Hey. And what really angers me this is not jealousy or anything is those fans that are truly passionate about star Wars. They're completely ignored. Instead, what gets propped up are reactionary fucking nonsense. 
or reactionary takes of fucking Star Wars. It angers me because it because the quality of content of Star Wars is very small. It's insignificant. It's very small. The quality of content. It's only gotten worse with time. Star Wars YouTube was definitely at its best before The Last Jedi came out. From 2011 to 2017 was the best time to be a Star Wars YouTuber. Because it, it's just the conversations. Yeah, there was a lot of negativity still. But, it, but there was enough room to have a nuanced conversation about any of the stuff that I'm discussing now that it was it had a chance to get a decent amount of exposure but the last jedi controversy pretty much killed star wars youtube why fucking talk about positive content why do deep analysis and deep dives when you can just simply rant and rave for fucking two or three hours about a fucking movie that's turning five years old as i'm fucking recording this fucking stream i mean holy shit i'll probably do a a stream on Jedi's Cantina, The Last Jedi, five years later, does it really deserve the hate that it gets? And yes, I will watch The Last Jedi again and, and for that stream, should I do it. Hell, I may ask some of my guys if they want to do a video on it, to do an actual more interesting analysis on The Last Jedi, rather than just do a boring rant on, oh, this movie's woke blah 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 do something more interesting because that's the kind of conversations i like i don't like the last jedi either hell if you are open for it let's we can analyze the whole sequel trilogy gungaros are you game for that a marxist destruction of the sequel trilogy <laughs> i mean i'm would be more than willing to do that. I mean, it'd be something unique. It'd be something different. Fuck it. Do a, doing a Marxist destruction of the sequel trilogy. It would be entertaining. Though it'll drive me crazy just watching the, those movies again. I literally have not seen the sequels in almost two years. <laughs> <laughs> We could we could do it from a Marxist perspective. <laughs> well, The Last Jedi is the most interesting to analyze simply because it is probably the most left Star Wars film. At least the most left of anything Disney has done for Star Wars as far as I know. It's Okay, I know for those of you here who probably have seen that cringy, infamous rant that I did in 2018 where I called people not real fans if they like The Last Jedi. I cringe at that video. I cringe. I can't believe anyone fucking liked that video. It was terrible. A terrible video done by a butthurt fanboy. Yes, and I'm going to say that about myself. Who just couldn't move on. And you, that was just first worldism I was engaging in. It's like, when I think about that in retrospect, what the fuck was I doing? Why was I even calling myself a communist at that point when I was just acting like a reactionary? That's just, but then again, that's what I did. It's it's been a it's been four years since I've done that. I've grown up. And those who hate on The Last Jedi, who still do, who actually won't be objective about it, who won't see the the good qualities of it, they're 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 stuck in 2017. Well, I have moved on. Yes, I, I don't like the film, but I at least can appreciate The Last Jedi after seeing the rise of Shitwalker for at least having the balls to do something different, even if it fucking did it terribly. And can I just go on a tirade here? Because I think I should go on a tirade. It seems like people, whether they're a fan of, former fan of mine, because they don't like the fact that I've changed, that I've went 
a more left wing direction, or for the for for fucking whatever. Let's well, not even talk about that irrelevant, like wannabe fucking Canadian American who who wants to be America, but he lives in Canada. Let's not talk about him. I actually grow as a person, change, and I'm hated for it. Oh, this is the downfall of Darth Synovia. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some asshole somewhere who did the downfall of Darth Synovia. It's like, why? Because I chose to be, because I actually chose to care about something. Oh, I actually made a stand against hate against and fandom. It's just so sad. Like, like people seem to like look at someone and, and when they move beyond like what they liked about them, they fucking say, oh, you have gone downhill when people have changed over time. It's like, let's be real. Every single person changes. And those who don't, they're children. You're a child if, if you don't actually grow. All of us grow. If we don't grow, we die. And I hate to be that guy. Luke Skywalker, if he was the exact same way as he was in Return of the Jedi... You would have bitched that Luke Skywalker is boring. He hasn't changed. It's like he's the exact same character, and yet he's actually regressed in some ways. Don't be. Let's be honest, people. They would have complained regardless. It's like let's be honest here. If we could, if we had to compare the, the the original trio, like from the original trilogy when they were introduced in the sequels, if anyone fucking basically was ruined the most, I would say, I'd argue it was Han Solo. Because no progression at all in his character. He just regressed back to who he was before he fucking like, met Leia in A New Hope. He was, he was basically a smuggler again. He basically felt like, oh, Han Solo in A New Hope? Let's just age him like 30 years. And that's basically the character. Leia, as much as I don't like where her character went, in the sequel trilogy, she felt different from the from how she was from the original trilogy, and it's one possible direction she might have gone. I personally prefer her arc in the in Legends. Luke Skywalker was probably the most interesting that they they went with the characters, but the thing is, the way it was executed was just done horribly because Luke Skywalker, like. Was it possible that he could have gone this direction? Him basically letting his accomplishments get to his head. Of course it would have. Of course it would have. And people want to like, basically, they love to praise Luke in Legends, but seem to forget Luke in Legends, but the last time we saw him, was not the same man he was at the end of Return of the Jedi. And I'd argue Luke in Legends had 10 more years of experience of life experience than his canon counterpart. And he still was a different person. So, so what is the difference? Where's the hate for EU, Luke? Oh, because you're too lazy to read a bunch of books that actually continues Luke's story in an arguably better way, in my opinion. But... I'm not going to argue with people here who prefer the the legends or, or the canon way Luke's story went. I'm not here to argue about that. I'm just talking about, in my opinion, I think these people f just fucking refuse to see that Luke Skywalker, even he grew as a person. Nobody fucking stays the same. If, you're, if anyone stays the same in fiction, no one's going to want to fucking watch it. It's boring. And Luke Skywalker, the way he was portrayed in the sequel trilogy, it would have been interesting had, one, we Luke Skywalker was in all three films, so we got a chance to, to actually develop Luke's character more. Or, B, delete fucking bullshit that, didn't, that doesn't advance any, the story anyway. Like, Canto Bite could have been completely deleted and not much of significance would have changed. Now, what does this have to do with, with, with me? Because it seems like a lot of people just can't seem to let go of what someone was like before, or they just see them in a certain set of bind and can't look beyond that. Like, 
Well, let's be honest here. My jury of these fucking haters of mine from the Star Wars fandom, they only look at what I do in the Star Wars fandom. They don't look beyond what I what I care about beyond Star Wars. Because Star Wars is not the thing I care about the most. What we, what I've been seeing for the past few years has been has, has, is terrifying me. Just how casually people are supporting fascism or not resisting fascism or seeing more police like patrolling neighborhoods or seeing the police looking more and more like fucking stormtroopers or seeing the police look not much different from the from the from the IDF in Israel it's like that concerns me more than star wars does or the fact that that the casual cruelty people have towards the homeless is something that really concerns me or the disregard for the disabled that concerns me more than star wars i mean from 2019 to 2000 22 i lost people that i've known for years and this is not a secret my own mother died almost two years ago i almost so i went through a lot of shit in that time yet these people still look at what i did or do strictly from star wars oh i'm using i'm using star wars to push marxism hate to break it to you but i barely do star wars content so i can't really push marxism and even if i did it's it's not i could i basically it's my channel i could basically do what i want and not to mention you have no problem to pushing your fascistic rhetoric anyway so if i can fucking push my politics which let's be honest here i was dishonest basically trying to hide my politics more than anything else. In fact, me being more open with my po politics made it easier for me to create quality content because if I can't actually talk about issues and relate it to the real world, then how the hell am I going to make this review interesting? Why should I just, like, my, let's be honest here. My, if you watch my old review for Shatterpoint, like, back when I did it in 2018 and compare it to to the one I did last year, there's just no comparison which one is better. The The remake is longer. I've gotten into, I got into more detail about the themes of the book. I actually talked about things that the interesting parts of the book that I didn't talk about in the original review. And I even like brought up some other things that were, when I did bring up politics, I didn't have it overshadowed the review, but I did bring it up when it was necessary. It's like it is no comparison which review was more interesting. It's like being reluctant to talk about politics is basically sabotaging your fucking ability to actually talk, have any interesting discussion when you engage with media.